March 1st will mark the beginning of the LEGO Star Wars 25th anniversary celebration and will bring the first 25th anniversary sets, which will include boarding the Tantive 4, the buildable R2, and a new collection which will include the Millennium Falcon, the Tantive 4, and the Invisible Hand, and that will be called the Spaceship Collection. <laughs> That is not correct. In the past, when a new set has been released, we've seen a shift in the supply and demand for retired sets and minifigures. Minifigures. Why did I say that weird? Minifigures. Sometimes it is due to like a new character, well not a new character, but a character making their live action debut, like Cad Bane or Grand Admiral Thrawn. Why is it always the blue guys? Why are you blue? Prediction, next minifigures to spike in price will be the Avatar minifigures. <laughs> So what are some of these sets and minifigures that you should look to add to your collection before the March 1st wave arrives? Look no, hit the desk here. Look no further, I've got a full list for you. We'll start off with one that um, is pretty simple and I don't think it will go up too much in price or be too hard to find, but that is the Dark Trooper attack set. For me, this set will always be remembered as the set that destroyed the resale market of the uh, the Dark Trooper minifigures. Before this set came out, it was only, uh, the, the minifigure was only featured in the Imperial Light Cruiser set, and uh, it was reselling for like 40, 45, maybe even 50 bucks. But after the set was released, you, I mean, now you can find it for like four or five dollars and that's like on the expensive side. But I think that this set would look really, really cool sitting next to the Boarding the Tantive 4 set. Although I haven't heard the best thoughts. It's not like reviews, but thoughts about the Boarding the Tantive 4 set. Despite that being the case, I still think it's going to be the most popular Star Wars set in this March 1st release. It has the most minifigures by far, and the 25th anniversary minifigure that will be included is the fan favorite Clone Trooper 5s. Now, next up, I've got two midi scale sets um, that will go with the, uh, the Starship collection, first of which being the Executor Star Destroyer. Now, this set was already pretty popular when it was released um, in May of last year. And for me, as a lover of LEGO, uh, and, and the main thing that I love about LEGO being the minifigures, I wasn't too uh, ecstatic about this set. Um, my my friend Zane even texted me, he said, hey, you know, make sure that you uh, pre-order this before it runs out. And I was like, hey, you know, it's cool, but there aren't any minifigures, so I'm gonna pass. And I also thought it was just kind of like a one-off set, something to um, celebrate the 40 year anniversary of Return of the Jedi, and it would just be like a May 4th set that came out and everyone would be like, oh, remember when that happened? But with the addition of three more midi scale sets and the uh, announcement that this will be a new collection, I was like, okay, this is this is something that I would be excited about to have in my collection, um, not just the, the Super Star Destroyer, but like the collection in general. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this set before March 1st. As a result of the three new midi skill sets, I could see this being a bit harder to find um, once March 1st rolls around and those new new sets have released. Um, I was lucky enough to pick mine up at my local Walmart. It was the last one um, that was available there. And I just checked, it's on back order on lego.com and it's sold out at my local Lego store. I just think that the set, I mean, the set looks cool on its own, um, but especially with the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi plaque, um, and that being next to the 25th anniversary of Lego Star Wars plaques that the new sets will have, um, I just think that that is a really, really cool display piece. The second MIDI scale set that I think will be a high ticket price item, at least for a little bit of time after March 1st, is the May 4th GWP Death Star 2. Now, when this was announced that it would be the, uh, the GWP for May 4th, I was super bummed out. Like I said earlier, Earlier. I love minifigures and uh, having had a lot of really great May 4th GWPs in the past um, as minifigures, I was I was really hoping that they would go with a minifigure again um, this past year. You know, we've had a Shadow Arf Trooper, TC-14, Darth Revan, Admiral Yularen. I'd even include the, the Lars Homestead in that list. Um, so I was pretty bummed out that it was just like this set with no minifigures. And honestly, I didn't think that it would uh, like 
resell for much. I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll buy some stuff for May 4th and like get the, the free Lego set. You know, if it's free, it's for me. So I'll, I'll take it. But because it does have, you know, its own 40th anniversary Return of the Jedi plaque, um, I also think that, again, it would look really cool. The, the two sets from Return of the Jedi, celebrating Return of the Jedi, being the Super Star Destroyer and the Death Star 2, and then the three sets celebrating 25 years of LEGO Star Wars with the Tantive IV, the Millennium Falcon, and the Invisible Hand. I think that is an awesome looking display, and I can't wait to have that in my collection. I'll also throw in like a bonus midi scale uh, set, which would be the Star Destroyer. Um, they made a Millennium Falcon and Star Destroyer midi scale sets several years ago, um, and I think that it would look cool to have that in the collection as well, but I could also see them redoing that and having it be look more like the Starship series. The reason I say that is just because they made a Millennium Falcon before they're making it again, so I could see them making a Star Destroyer again as well. So you could buy it if you wanted to, but I don't think that you really need to. I think that they'll, they'll make a new one uh, within the next year, two years. Okay, so these last two, um, they're pretty obvious because they come with the territory, uh, but next on the list is all of the 20th anniversary sets. Of course, these are gonna become popular again. They have the cool box, uh, the, the great 20th anniversary logo, the six different um, classic minifigures that they decided to use to celebrate the 20 years. I think this this wave of sets is awesome. Currently on Bricklink, um, the Slave 1 is the most expensive one, and that's anywhere around $160 to $240. And there are all the variables of, of how many minifigures does it have? And is it used or is it new? Is it sealed? All that stuff. But somewhere around 160 bucks to $240. Um, and then the least expensive is the Battle of Hoth, and that's like 35 to 50 bucks. So I could see these regaining some popularity because it is the 20th anniversary um, Lego Star Wars sets. And specifically for those those 20th anniversary minifigures. But along with that, they're great sets. There's great minifigures as well. You know, there's uh, Anakin's Pod Racer, which is the most recent Pod Racer that um, we've gotten, at least Anakin, I think, maybe. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments, by all means. Um, we're rumored to get like a diorama um, sometime this year. I, I don't stay too up to date with rumors and stuff. I might make a video about it um, later, but we'll see. Um, but we're rumored to get some sort of Moss Espa pod race type diorama. And I don't know what that will look like. I'm afraid that it might just be the cockpit of the pod racer and it be Anakin and Sebulba's. Cause if you look at the size of a pod racer, even like a play scale one, I say even like a play scale one, like we've gotten a UCS one before. <laughs> um, a play scale one compared to the size of a diorama, it's much bigger. So I, I hate to say it, but I don't think we'll get a full pod racer in that diorama. And then there's also the slave one and it, that is not the most recent slave one, but I think it is the best most recent slave one if that makes sense and there's great minifigures in that set you know you've got han with like his blue jacket um which in my opinion is my favorite minifigure of han it blue is my favorite color so of course that's that's the case you've got the only zuckus minifigure in that set and then there's like a forlom and a boba fett and the uh 20th anniversary Princess Leia. It's an awesome set. So I could definitely see those regaining some popularity in the near future. And then last, but certainly not least, is the Darth Revan minifigure. Now this minifigure has already started to go up in price with the like announcement, or it was probably more of a leak, honestly, that Darth Malak would be one of the 25th anniversary minifigures. And uh, this this minifigure, it really started go up, going up in price like, 2022 and it looks as it will continue to climb as as time goes on so if you can find him for under like 230 240 bucks um used in good condition right now i 
I hate to say it, but I think that that's a pretty good deal. Which sucks that a plastic toy that was given away for free and selling for $250 or less is a good deal, but that's it's how Liberty dies. And I will say that the Darth Revan and uh, Darth Malak minifigures next to each other look really great. They look awesome. So those are the 12 sets and minifigures that you should be looking to add to your collection before the March 1st wave arrives. Comment down below what set you're gonna be picking up on March 1st, and if you have any on your list that you wanna buy before then that are you know, on my list of retired sets and minifigures, be sure to add that in the comment section below as well. Thank you so much for watching. As always, keep building. We'll see you real soon. Peace. March 1st will mark the beginning of, I don't know what I'm saying. I still don't know what I'm saying.